EA Sports and the Corn Ferry Tour are proud to bring you this look at the future stars in the sport of golf. From the Quail Hollow Club in Charlotte, live third round coverage of the Charlotte Championship. Well, if yesterday was any indication, we should be in for a memorable weekend of golf here as we take in the leaderboard on this Saturday. Our leader is indeed our featured golfer. It has been a textbook performance to this point. for a nice approach from way out. That one finds the green with a birdie putt on tap. Oh, I've got to hope that's not a harbinger of things to come. Safely in. It's a par here at first. And she'll remain at minus 19. You really like a golf course that challenges you in so many different ways. And here's a good example at Quail Hollow. That first hole, well, it was a dog leg to the right. The second, it's a dog leg left. So it is asking you to move the ball in both directions, and we know you're up to it. Second shot coming up. Let's check in for the first time with Nota Begay the third. 157 to the hole. Pin is very accessible here, right in the center of the green. Uh, it's not too bad. Good shot. Inside 20 feet, I would imagine. So a good chance, really outside chance for Betty. Didn't get that out there far enough, and it winds up sliding by to the right. That finished off for par. He with the second. And her score is going to stay right where it is. Start of this golf course, Frank, asking the players to hit some quality shots. T2 green, third is no different. Exactly. You get a dog leg right, then you get a dog leg left, and now you get a straightaway par four with just one bunker on the right side. It's 320 yards to get past that bunker. Needless to say, it needs to be avoided. But then the second shot's played downhill, but it's right there in front of you. And that... A good looking shot there. Well placed in the fairway. Getting set now for the second shot here at the third. Break it down for us, Frank. There's three ridges in this green, Rich, so you've got to be aware on where exactly the flag is. Ah, uh, good shot. Safely on the green and a birdie chance. 11 feet away. Oh, yes. Plenty of pace to get up that slope. It is in for a birdie. And she'll move to an even 20 under par. Here now at our first par three at Quail Hollow, the 167 yard fourth. Cover the three bunkers guarding the front. Hold that green, and you'll be putting for birdie. We 
we go. Well, you don't just hit the shot sometimes, you maneuver it, and that's a really good example right there. Beautifully executed. So what could have been there, mere inches from going into the cup, but the consolation prize is a tap-in birdie. Next on tap, another challenging par for this one, the 449-yard fifth. Split those two bunkers guarding the landing area at the dog leg to the right, and you should have a good angle to this green. The whole cup in the middle right, this nice drive down the left side, certainly opens up the second shot. Second shot coming up. Let's bring in Iona Steven. One, three, three, the number. Pin on the right-hand side, so plenty of room to the left of it. Well, I don't have my tape measure out, but that looks like, you know, what, six, seven feet in there, but that is an excellent approach shot. Oh, how about the run here? That a third consecutive birdie. And she'll get it to 22 under par. Coming off that hard par three here now, a chance to make a good score, maybe even an eagle if everything goes right. This is a great opportunity on this par five, Rich, as you stated. Uh, I'll, I'll start at the green on this one for, a, for a, a change. If you look at the big ridge in that green, you can use that as a backstop. So now when you look at that tee shot and you're just trying to avoid those bunkers on the left off the tee, you don't have to kill it off the tee. As long as you've got some sort of club in there that you can comfortably fly the water with, use that ridge to its advantage. Tell you what, I've enjoyed watching this display all day long. We hear the phrase in football, ball control. It applies to what we've seen here from this player. That is an outstanding display of ball control. Oh, everything going right now. That a fourth consecutive birdie. And she'll move to 23 under par. All right, so coming off that tough 249-yard par 3 sixth, get a chance to maybe get one back at the reachable seventh. It's a par five at 546 yards. Yeah, why not? Another great tee shot. Maybe a chance now to go after what would be a fifth consecutive birdie. looks of this one. Well, that one had to feel good. Yeah, it struck it so well. You could see that by the reaction of that ball when it hit the green. It landed so softly. Take advantage of a par five. It's in for an eagle three. Superb. See what kind of pop you have in the bat here. Can you get there? It's 346 yards, this par four eighth. Turn it on here and make something happen. was flirting with disaster the whole way and it's going to wind up popping into the bunker. Oh. 
All right, not exactly what you're hoping for, but safely on the putting surface with birdie still in play. Oh, yes. Plenty of pace to get up that slope. It is in for a birdie. And that will move her to 26 under par. Now to the ninth, better than 500 yards, and it is a par four. Is this one of the hardest holes in the course, Frank? It certainly is. Uh, it's a great way to finish this front nine. Uh, dog leg left, and they put the bunker right where you want to aim it, down that right side. So now you've got to go a little closer to the trees. But don't go there. Please don't go there. Once again, another great tee shot. Uh, I'm starting to wonder how low can you go? And the driving has been simply superb. That's well played. Now a good look at birdie. Chance now for another birdie. Not that time. Pretty good effort, but it'll wander a couple of feet by. She'll brush that one in for her par here at the ninth. And that is going to mean this was a 28 on the front side, 7 under par. The 11th hole is 592 yards. It's obviously a par 5, and it is the longest hole here at Quail Hollow. Saturday of golf here, and this, another fine tee shot. Good shot, that is home and two on the par five. Remember, made eagle earlier in the round, Frank. That may be a chance for a second. I know we can't call it a double eagle, but um, talk about aggression in these par fives. Way to stand up there and just hit the shot. Oh, yeah. That's how you take advantage of a par five. It's in for an eagle three. Superb. The 11th hole was lengthened in recent years, making this a pretty challenging par four. What do you think, Frank? It is, Rich. The two bunkers down the left side uh, are, are almost all the distances that you would think of if you lay up or you go for it with a driver. So you have to respect that and just go a little right. Um, it's a lovely tee shot, the way in which it flows in amongst the trees, though, on either side. And a deceptively quick green from back to front. Really starting to make a hard game look easy. Drive after drive has been superb. And this one, well, as we like to say, is in the mayor's office. That's a good shot, and more importantly, too, a green in regulation, so birdie chance. Now this for another birdie. Oh, yes. Plenty of pace to get up that slope. It is in for a birdie. That is going to move her to a tidy 29 under par. 
We arrive here at the 456 yard 12th. Another beautiful par four here at Quail Hollow. There are plenty. No real trouble to speak of. If you find the fairway off the tee, you'll have a good angle at this green. Saturday of golf here, and this another fine tee shot. Now, that's not too bad. Good shot. Uh, inside 20 feet, I would imagine. So a good chance, really an outside chance for Betty. No. That one safely in. And it's a par here at 12. And that's going to keep this large lead right where it is. Up next, the first par three on the back side here at Quail Hollow, 208 yard 13. Carry the bunker front left, and a chance at birdie is yours. Okay, front left portion of the green and an outside look at birdie from there. This one measures out to 15 feet. It needs to slow a bit. Okay, that, that's still going to be a good four feet though coming back. Well judged, that is in for par here at 13. And she's going to remain at 29 under par. Now to the par four, 14th. It's only 344 yards, not long by today's standards. But Frank, everywhere you look, there's trouble. Exactly. Um, and a lot of people just sort of pull the head cover off the driver when they try and fly it on the front edge of the screen. You actually don't have to do that. You can take a three wood, land the ball about 30 or 40 yards short, and just let the ball run just short of the green. And it's a fairly straightforward up and down at just about anywhere on the screen. If you hit driver, you've only got one chance. And that has to be perfect. Once again, another great tee shot. Uh, I'm starting to wonder how low can you go? And the driving has been simply superb. Really, it's a waste after that tee shot. Uh, just very average approach. Chance now for another birdie. And players have a option to take less break by increasing the speed here. No issues there. It is a par here at 14. And her score is going to stay right where it is. We now come to the final par five of the day, the picturesque 577 yard 15th dog leg left with a second shot over water. This hole is not for the faint of heart. be a wonderful Saturday of golf here and this another fine tee shot.
Frank, it is one thing to stack cars on a sport car, but Eagles, this is an incredible performance. Well, well, I'm used to birdie feasts, but eagle feasts? I didn't think you could do that. Yeah, easy to come up short on that one, but that's a decent effort. And that one finished off. It's a birdie here at 15. And that's going to take her to an even 30 under par. Now to the 16th hole. It is a better than 500-yard par four, and it begins what they call the green mile. It is as tough a finishing stretch as you will find anywhere in golf. And it's also beautiful to the eye when you stand on that 16th tee. It does play downhill nearly 10 yards. So that bunker on the right side is 320. Take away the 10, so it's about 310 to carry. If you can take that line, you will choose so much off this hole. And then the second shot also is a little down breeze and it has like an infinity edge. You can't see the back of this green. What a great way to start the green mile. Second shot now from just a foot or two off the fairway. Take these around, but that looks like, I don't know, what, six, seven feet in there, but that is an excellent approach shot. Now, uh, this round finishing strong. Back to back birdies now at 15 and 16. And that's going to get her to 31 under par. As if 16 wasn't hard enough. Now you take a look at this 190-yard par 317th, almost entirely over water to that green. Take a deep breath, refocus, and hit a shot. Okay, just left of the hole, and now a putt for birdie coming up. Now this for another birdie. And a very makeable look here. Not too much undulation at all. Maybe just a slight move to the right. That one just going to sneak on by. Okay, she'll finish that one off for her part. And she'll stay right where she is, well under par. There aren't many golf courses that are both menacing and beautiful. Quail Hollow certainly is in that category. And this is a great example. The finishing hole, 494 yards, the 18th. It's a downhill tee shot. It is framed by that nasty bunker on the right. The real trouble, though, and we've seen this with tournaments through the years that have come down to the wire, is that stream on the left. If you hook it a little bit too far, you're wet. Then there's that uphill second shot, and the stream is still in play. There's a lot going on here in this finishing hole. shot when it left the club face. What's that? Eight or nine feet? Excellent shot. Yeah, it's a birdie at the last. And that final birdie means that this will be a round of 58. Incredible. So a final look at the leaderboard, and this has just been a runaway so far. Our featured golfer, miles in front, 
with 18 left to play. I'm still scratching my head trying to find the difference between you know a featured player and the rest of the field, but it's just better off the tee, better approach shots, better putting, uh, different league. So that's it for us, for Frank, Noda, Iona, and our entire crew. Rich Lerner saying, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on EA Sports PGA Tour.